It's over 9,000! Hello everybody and welcome back and I have to say one word or rather two words to all of you in many languages. Thank you, merci, gracias, dankeschön, spasiba, shukran, tak uh, and many many other languages I do not speak. Um, so thank you very much for uh, sticking with me for all the time that you did and almost making my channel reach 10,000 subscribers. So since we reach the magical over 9,000 mark, I thought let's make a rocket called over 9,000. And not only is it called the over 9,000, it has more than 9,000 meters uh, per second of delta V. And I have to be honest, I tried to make it uh, 9,000 tons heavy but then all kind of bad things started to happen and yeah, don't even get me started on trying to make it 9000 parts big. So yeah, here we go, this is the over 9000 and it is heading up into orbit around Kerbin. We're still on one of the early stages, well as a matter of fact this is well, it's the final lift stage, so the next time we separate, we will be already on the vehicle itself. So some nice heating effects going on. And we will soon reach uh, the desired apps. I'm aiming a little bit higher than the 70k, so we have a nice margin of error. Yeah. Some of you may remember uh, that big rocket I sent to Jewel, the Julishka. This is a little bit similar in design, but completely different in function, as you will see as soon as we have separated the stages. But first I have to get to my apps. So here we are, coasting to apps. The crew is chilling in their cabins. And yeah, now we are out of the atmosphere, so we have to get our new maneuver node, and there we go. Looking good, yeah. Enough fuel left in the tank, even more than we need to do what I am planning to do. So, the first step of this journey will be the moon. Uh, why the moon? Well, why not? It's the nearest planetary body that I can land this thing on, so I can show you what it is capable of. And we already have a trajectory around the moon. How oh, isn't the power of editing beautiful? So some nice view of the rear of the rocket. Gimbals doing their thing, even though they are not firing at all. So the next time we burn, which is now, this will be the last time for the booster stage, which could still, well, uh, I think it has enough delta V to put me in a stable orbit around the moon, but I just want to ditch it because, yeah, I want to show you this. This is the over 9000. And it has six cargo bays with uh, three pairs of different stuff in it. You can see the drills right here. You also see a science package and a pod for entering and exiting the vehicle. Yes, you can see some solar panels and you can see a refinery and ore storage. So yeah, this thing is designed to land on anything besides Tylo and Eve. Land there, gather resources, refill the tank and get back up and somewhere else. So the first time we're gonna try this is on the moon as I mentioned and that's where we're heading right now. We already got also got some resource scanner on board and of course some landing gear. 
Don't want to land without that now, do we? And th thanks to the magic of video editing again, we're already doing our circularization burn around the moon, which is fairly easy because this thing has loads of delta V and we don't need a lot of it to circularize around the moon. As a matter of fact, uh, we have so much left that we can do a very, com well, not complicated, but expensive uh, in regards to fuel, a plane change. It would have been a lot easier if I had made the trajectory in such a way that I already came into almost a polar orbit. Then we can start resource scanning, which we are doing right now, and looking for a suitable landing zone. And yeah, that looks promising. So this is a really, really big red spot there. And I'm landing in the dark. Yeah. Uh, this may be a little bit less exciting for you than it was for me, but uh, during this phase I was... <laughs> well, the only thing I could do was stare at my instruments. You see my Kerbal Engineer Redux readouts on the top of the screen. On the right I have my real altitude and on the center left I have my thrust to weight ratio. So I put this at a little bit above 1. I watched the altitude and the closer I got to the surface, I tried to, yeah, even that out or increase the thrust a little bit so I would not crash and I kept the, um, the menu open so I could increase the thrust to the rocket because I have decreased it to have more control over it. And yeah, I'm trying to land here and yeah, I did it. Well, that was uneventful. But to be honest, while I was doing that, I was quite scared. So yeah, the over 9000 in all its glory. So first things first, let's put the drills to work and get our fuel back. But alas, the drills cannot reach the surface, so we... Uh, put the gear back up, but unfortunately it broke on the landing, so the engineer gets out and repairs it, but it breaks immediately again after repair, so we have to get this thing back upright, then repair the landing struts, and then lower the entire thing to the ground. Now we can start the drills, and then we can get our fuel back. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now. And I'm heading back into the vehicle. No need for the science packages because I am the playing sandbox mode. So yeah, let's have a look around in the vehicle itself. Yay, the boys and girls are having fun. And they have loads of space. Also, we have a science lab. Unfortunately, we can't process any science, as I mentioned before, because we are in sandbox mode. And now, time to accelerate time. So yeah, since we landed in a rich spot of ore, we are finished only a day later. So time to pack things up, close the cargo base, open the gear, yay, that gave us a nice thrust away from the surface. So we saved about maybe 0.5 meters per second of delta V. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure there are some very, very uh, clever and capable people out there that could actually calculate the amount of force the landing gear put on the surface of the moon, lifting the rocket up into, well, not the air, but the vacuum, and therefore producing some kind of fuel saving. So if you are a kind of science geek or physics geek out there and know how to calculate this, comment below, let me know. I'm really interested in how uh, much delta V I have saved by this. Can't be that much, but still. Okay, and now we are in a stable orbit again. And we're doing a plane change to get some nicer orbit again. But we have another goal. 
Of course, as I mentioned before, this is made for other planets as well. And what better way to test it than on the red marble of Kerbin. Duna. Hi Duna. We are already scanning you for resources so we can pick a good landing spot. So where would be a promising spot to land? Let's use a different color scheme because red on red is not that good. Green, yeah. Well, looks okay. Where are we going to land? Maybe there in one of those big center kind of things close to the equator. But then I thought, hey, I never, I actually never visited the poles of Duna. So, yeah, why not try it? And I also brought some parachutes, so I thought, well, why not use them and slow my descent through the atmosphere of Duna using the parachutes. But it was late and I was kind of in a hurry and yeah, see for yourselves. So we have reduced our velocity, we are on a ballistic trajectory down to the surface and you may have noticed that my engine is not firing and I'm heading down very quickly and I'm concentrating solely on the parachutes and not on the engine and not on the ground coming towards me quickly or rather the other way around I'm heading to the grounds quickly and yeah this is the time where I realized hmm, maybe I should activate the engine to save my over 9000 but too late. The over 9000 is in over 9000 pieces. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.